Welcome to Dare to Leap, a conversation and community supporting women just like you to gain the freedom, flexibility, and financial security you desire and deserve with CEO and founder of Virtual Expert Training, Kathy Guggenauer. This is Dare to Leap, and now here's the powerhouse tiara-wearing Kathy Guggenauer. Hello, everybody. I am so excited today because basically my favorite business coach, trainer, person, leader, I can't even say enough good things about her, is who I am interviewing today. Her name is Jennifer Kim, and as you can probably see, she is a beautiful woman, and she is beautiful inside and out and every way around. And I just want to start by telling you a little bit about Jen and how she and I have worked personally together. And then I'm going to tell you about her professional bio. So when I had built my training and coaching business to 100,000 annually revenue, I got stuck there. And I was stuck there for three years. And I took other training and I took other coaching and nothing seemed to shift it. And I'm a big action taker. So it wasn't because I wasn't taking action. And then I met Jennifer Kim and my life changed because Jennifer was able to tap into many, many different things that were going on with me. But the biggest one was my mindset. She helped me discover that I didn't feel like I was worth more than $100,000 a year. And until I was able to shift that, no amount of action in any other level was going to help me change that. And so by working with Jen, I was able to go from 100,000 the first year I worked with her to 300,000 in just 12 months. And the next 12 months from 300,000 to 700,000. And Jen, I haven't shared this with you yet, but this year, which is the very next year that I've been working with her, so year three, I'm really looking at um, almost doubling that again and my goal for 2021 end of year is 2 million. So Jen, thank you. And you can go ahead and say something if you want to, and then I'll do your, because <laughs> I feel oh like, God. oh my gosh. I, well, my mouth is opening like, <laughs> yes, because yeah, if I you want to celebrate <laughs> Kathy for uh, just, it, it makes me both happy and a little emotional because, because we've been working together consistently for a number of years, I wanted to thank you for trusting yourself to up level and ha and start to work with me who I know that I, I challenged you uh, to, to think bigger, to put your heart and your mind together to create these incredible results. And all the credit really goes to you because you're open to connecting the vision to the extreme action you do take. And I just want to say uh, if that alone, if we stop the podcast now and anybody <laughs> that as the takeaway, I think that we both have done our work here. So thank you. <laughs> so, um, so now that you know why you're going to want to listen to every little gem that Jennifer Kim drops, let me give you her professional bio so you know a little bit more about her. She is a San Francisco Bay Area based brand building and leadership expert who gets entrepreneurs seen, heard, and paid for being themselves. And if you're watching the video, you know, or if you've seen anything that I do, you know, she really means being themselves because I am a unique character. <laughs> and she has helped me step fully into it. She's also the creator of the Master Brand Method, which is a framework to develop power, powerful brands that win customers' hearts, which she uses in strategic consulting for emerging entrepreneurs, celebrity brands like, now hold on to your hats, Oprah Winfrey Network, and Steve crowns. Harvey. Yes. Or your crowns. Hold on to your crowns. <laughs> That's right. Hold on to your crowns. That's right. Your tiaras. Um, and she also works with major corporations, including Verizon, Blue Cross Blue Shield, and Bank of Hawaii, just to name a few. Jen is a successful owner of $3 million businesses and the proud mother of three children. So welcome, Jen. Thank you so much for being on my podcast. Uh, 
it's already so great. I don't even know if I can give more, but I, yeah, I'm so thrilled to, to be here. I should have brought my tiara. Darn it. <laughs> you Next look so time. beautiful. Uh, yeah. Thank you. But no, but you seriously, because I, I just want everybody to know as we open up that what I love about Kathy is her quirky genius. She's both, you know, you can be quirky and you can be a genius and you can be approachable and you can be authoritative. And she inspired me to buy a few um, new crowns. So literally uh, <laughs> I, I have them. And when I moved from Hawaii to the Bay area, um, you know, my crowns were coming with me. So thank you, Kathy. And now I feel really upset. I don't have it. So I'm going to take a picture <laughs> and, and do that for next time. Okay, cool. Well, um, and I just love what you just said for next time. So that means listeners, there is going to be a next time that Jen will be on the podcast. I hope so. I didn't didn't mean to drop that. So, uh, you know, confident, (laughs) you know, (laughs) yeah. Well, speaking of confidently, that's what we're going to talk about today. So Jen, one of the things that you obviously have helped me with is stepping further into my confidence and my leadership. So Mm -hmm. can you talk a little bit about that, about how you develop that, about tips to help other people do the same? Yeah, you know, I, when I came onto the, what I consider like the online scene, you know, I've been doing building brands, marketing, launching products and services for big corporations as Kathy indicated for 20 plus years. I like to describe myself as a seasoned chicken, not a spring chicken, you know? So I've been around <laughs> the bend and, uh, you know, and I think the word chicken is, is applicable here because when we want to show up, you know, hit that live stream button, or we're told by our coaches to message ourselves in a different way, or just consistently period, like just to do it at least, you know, five days in a row. It's that piece that we become chickens, right? We feel like, ah, uh, so scary. And I get it because I've been there because again, getting back to the scene, when I jumped in what I call this kind of online marketing slash, you know, internet world, even though I had been doing things and launching things digitally since the dawn of the digital age, right? Uh, So long ago already, we're such dinosaurs, you know, but, you know, I came onto the scene and and I saw a lot of, I'm just going to say it plainly because, you know, Kathy knows I speak plainly. I saw so much trash on the internet streets. And what I mean by that is there were so many overwhelming, you know, it's like when trash uh, backs up, you know, if you don't clear it out, it gets you discombobulated. And I noticed a lot of emerging entrepreneurs, people who were either choosing freelance type of business, um, want to get into coaching or consulting, uh, want to build courses and of obviously like this, this, this wave of new uh, professions like virtual assistants, which, you know, I still think, and I'm not just saying this because I'm biased because I love Kathy personally and professionally, obviously, but that specific niche I knew would be an explosion, you know, eight years ago. And I, but what I saw was so many people were nervous and didn't feel like they had the confidence to say, yeah, I can be an expert in that, what, whatever it is. And so I made it my mission really back to getting seen, heard, and paid. I really believe to get seen, heard, and paid, you have to develop your confidence muscles. And when I say confidence, I'm not saying you need to be the loudest or the most provocative or the most highly performative or even wear tiaras. You know, you have to be you. You have to be willing to let people see not just who you are, but what you've accomplished in a way that lands and makes people realize that your solution is something they need because it ultimately it's about that. You know, people are afraid of the other part I saw linked to confidence is just marketing in general, right? Being able to market yourself is the biggest gap. In fact, if you haven't hit seven figures in your business, your biggest gap is marketing. I'm going to say that again. If you haven't hit seven figures, your biggest gap is marketing. Some people will tell you it's, you know, um, sales. 
obviously it is, but if you're good at marketing, sales become very easy. Uh, you know, Kathy knows this because she's built some really mm-hmm. good funnels, which we can talk about even later if we want to, but I yeah. look and at- I thought it was my sales, Jen. I right. did. I thought, oh, I'm not converting well enough. Yeah. But you're right. It was the, the marketing, the leads coming in because uh, right. it's a numbers game. And if you get that coming in, you're going to get the sales. It is. It's a numbers game and it's a quality game, right? And you don't mm-hmm. get quality unless you actually do quantity first. You have to be willing to go and get a bigger swath of people so that, and then with your messaging, your confident messaging comes through, it will start to help people see, oh, I'm for you or I'm not for you. And that's a good thing. The faster you can get to that, the faster you're going to make consistent money. So marketing for me is a mindset game because marketing is just a confident mindset with a machine called the sales funnel that you put on top of it. The machine is actually quite stupid. I mean that truly, like it's dumb. It doesn't know anything, right? A sales funnel knows nothing until it's a the machine. Yes, until yeah. the until the messenger you, and the message is put into the machine so it can drive. I mean, a car can't move without the fuel and the driver. I mean, I know Tesla is now doing these like automatic driving things, but it's still not even legal yet. So like, let's not use that as an example. Right. But anyway, back to confidence. <laughs> I think that's the gap. And if anyone listening in is. I mean, I just like would wonder if you're head nodding right now, ask saying, gosh, you know, I wish I had more confidence to go live or, or let people know I can help them because please write this down. I have a very simple definition of marketing. It is simply letting people know how you can help them. That's what marketing is. And if you embrace that definition, instead of going, I need to have this technology and that thing. And it's so overwhelming. Yes. Technology plays a role. These funnels play a role, but if you make them more your helper versus like, I need to go learn this first, what you really need is to get clear on you, which is the mindset piece. And you need to get clear on your message and then your marketing will work. And so for me, I'm obsessed because I, I, I was trying to find Kathy, like what are the, the key things missing that's preventing the best people who can help people, especially virtual assistants. Are you kidding me? Visionaries who are completely unorganized need people to help them. This is such an important role. So to think that you're not needed, that's a confidence problem, right? It's not a, it's not a real problem because it's actually a real solution. Right. So mm-hmm. that's why confidence is so important to me. Yeah. And I love your definition of marketing is just letting people know what you can do for them. And so when people say to you, Jen, because I know you work with a lot of women and, you know, we as women often have that, oh, I don't want to bother anybody. So what do you tell people when they say, I don't want to bother people? I don't, you know, if they, if they really need me, maybe they can just find me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Man, what tips do you have? What do you recommend for people to get out there and not yeah. wait for people to find you? Because they can't find you when you're hiding. Exactly. I mean, the, so, you know, pros and cons of an online based business as a virtual assistant, right? Pros are you can work from anywhere. You can create your entire like revenue plan based on your level of effort and, you know, your willingness to be consistent in your, in your level of effort. And also, you know, you're picking an area that people need, like, let's say it's content marketing or accounting even as a virtual assistant, you know, basically anything that supports a visionary's dream is great for a virtual expert. So here are some tips around how you can, well, first of all, let's get some facts straight. The, the, the problem with the internet is it's, okay, think about the old days, right? Where to have power And to have business, one of the most powerful industries is real estate. Like whoever owns the most land is the wealthiest, right? That's just a basic Mm -hmm. example. On the internet, I want you to think about it as real estate too, except it's infinite, Mm. right? And by creating and carving your place in this limitless real estate, you get to build your own zip code with your virtual expert business the problem is that it's limitless. So to think, 
that your people are going to randomly find your zip code when literally there is limitless real estate, you've got to let people know that you're the Rodeo Drive, you know, you're 90210 <laughs> or whatever, you know, whatever your zip code is, you need to invite people to your zip code on the internet. That's really, because we don't, it's like saying, I've never been to Timbuktu, right? I don't know if I ever will in my lifetime, but you don't just stumble upon Timbuktu. <laughs> but people, you hear about it, you hear about Timbuktu and you're like, oh, I wonder if I should ever go there. You know, but same thing with your online business. It has to be where you're letting people know, hey, here's my zip code. You can come here. And when you visit this zip code, we've got a storefront. We've got a thing mm -hmm. that can help you enjoy your time here. <laughs> and, and, and so my tip is, is that change, back to mindset reframing your relationship with this idea of, I, I, I know I'm good at what I do, which you are. So let's just own that. I am good at what I do. So we need to own that first. And the next thing we need to say is, I am worthy of being seen, heard, and paid. And in order to do that, I must be visible. I have to let people know where my zip code is on this real estate that I own. It's so exciting because some of us who either only own one house or maybe have never owned a home, I love that metaphor because it's like, oh, wow, I get to create, I get to build my home on the internet, my office on the internet, my castle on the internet, right? <laughs> Whatever it yeah. is. And it's a right. reframe. And then when you start to realize like the most prosperous empires are the ones that realize that the prosperity of the kingdom or the queendom or the empire is dependent upon the people, you know, the prosperity of the people too. And so if you can build something that people want to come and they want to plant seeds too, and then more people will come, that's the way that you think about it. So have a visual, you know, last tip about like, how do you start doing, have a visual about how you see your place on the internet it can be simple. It doesn't have to be fancy but it has to be visible. People need to know about the zip code. They need to know about this destination. And that simply mm -hmm. is plugging in marketing to let people know that. Oh my gosh, I love build your castle on the internet. I, mm. I just wrote that down. Yeah, use it. <laughs> every use it. time I talk to you, Jen, every time I talk to you, there is some new thing that I go, wow. And I, <laughs> I'm with you, that metaphor is awesome. Thank you for sharing that. Mm -hmm. One of the other things that I've learned a lot about from you, um, and I know really that really supports you in your life on every level, whether it's personal or business or whatever, are your values. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about how your values have impacted your life and your business? Yeah. I, you know, if it's okay, I'll tell you how I kind of came to developing what I call a values driven framework for my life. Yes. So. Please. People ask me a lot, how did you become so successful? Well, first of all, it's hard to know success if you don't know failure too. They're in relationship with each other. Instead of thinking that they're enemies, I want you to think of them as in relationship. You know, we don't have triumph without challenge. And they are both, they are, they are, they are connected, not separate. So I've experienced the same. As I said earlier, I'm a seasoned chicken. So I didn't spend, I didn't become this you know, online entrepreneur, uh, not definitely not overnight. And it actually was not my chosen vocation. I didn't know I wanted to have my own business, not just growing up, but even in my early adulthood, I was a corporate executive. Similar to Kathy and I have a similar story in terms of she worked for a big telecommunications company. And I, my last job my last traditional job was for, <laughs> you know, a big telecommunications technology company. And I honestly thought that that was going to be my life. And I was, I wasn't feeling fulfilled, but I felt content. There's a difference. You can be content, but not feel fulfilled. And I think a lot of people get that confused too. And that's why they get stuck in what I call maybe decisions or indecision. And indecision and maybe, I say, are the devil. Like literally, they are the devil in your life and business. And the way to, 
I don't know, get rid of the devil is to become value driven. <laughs> so back to my corporate life, how I figured this out was I was a very successful marketing executive. I ran the business to business division of telecommunications, which I like to say is like really boring money, like cloud services, managed services, security, VoIP, like the most boring stuff, but it made the company billions and billions of dollars, right? And it's interesting because business to consumer is the, mo the more sexy stuff, like, oh, they sell cell phones and like, you know, all the sexy stuff, right? And I worked on the boring side, but I was pretty fancy even back then, like in terms of like, you know, <laughs> I was this little spunky Filipino leader who led big teams and I got ish done. Like I was known for getting stuff done. And I was promised a promotion and I'm sure Kathy has shared this story about her where it's like, stop smiling or else you'll never get promoted. You'll never move up. For me, it was, you are very, you are very effective. You know, I would get fives on my performance review, but the area of my performance review that always would get like a three and a half or four was they would be like, you know, you need to learn how to create more, un you know, united fronts and basically play politics better. That's what they wanted me to be, but they really liked the results I got for them, right? When I could get product launches out in a big way. Well, I was promised a big promotion and uh, I worked literally guys, 120 hour weeks, never saw my family for two, 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 um, two years, really like very little. I'd come, you know, I'd leave early. I'd come home late. I spent the weekends. I'd be that office in the building. If you were on the street where the light was on, you know, if you drove by and it was because I was like, yes, I'm going to hit that next rung in the ladder. I'm going to like get promoted to senior VP. And then that'll set me up to be a CMO of a big company and potentially a CEO. You know, I had this vision for my life and I found out after I had just implemented one of the biggest projects that Verizon had ever done, that they gave my job that they had promised me to my white male colleague. And while he was kicking it on the golf course with our boss, I was working mm. and I realized two things. One, how stupid am I? Like that I thought <laughs> that just hard work would get me what I want. And number two, I realized what my real values were because up until that point, I thought my values were ambition and family. I correlated the two. It was like, I work hard so that I can provide, right? Because I had two young daughters and uh, they were going to private school. And I thought, oh, you know, I'm doing my job as a mother. I really actually was like, probably should have been more with them. And these are all the things that I've unpacked since that moment in time. And the bottom line was, it's what birthed this values-driven framework that I spoke of. Because you don't know what your real values are until you know what violates them. So that's the key takeaway is that I realized that, oh, wait, ambition. If that's my highest value, no matter how hard I work, no matter how much I try to like chase up the ladder, I'm not in control of that at all. Someone else is in control of that, right? So mm -hmm. that was the first thing. Second thing was like, you know, what really makes, it didn't feel just, it didn't feel right. It didn't feel fair. Mm -hmm. And so I realized that my real, and, it, and I was pissed off at the leadership. I was like, you know, I, and then I started to look at myself and say, is this the life that I want to leave? Is this the legacy I want to leave just because I get paid well? I mean, I had, a, I had no good reason to leave. I made $250,000 a year. I had a parking spot with my freaking name on it. Like that was like bigger <laughs> to me than my money. I was like, look at me. I like that. Oh, yeah. I hear you. <laughs> yeah, it's like so special when your nameplate mm -hmm. is above a parking spot, these symbolic mm -hmm. things. And anyway, I had no good reason. It was very risky to leap based on, you know, the name of this podcast. But I realized that I had one chance or I felt like I had one chance because I was at the time 31 years old. And I was like, well, if I want to do something and be in control of my life, I'm got to do it now. Like that's how I felt. So I want you to know too, don't mm -hmm. think if you're in your fifties or sixties right now and you're like, Oh, I lost my chance. No, for me, 31 was the time for me. And it just, 
the awakening is your time. So maybe even right now, as you're listening to Kathy and me, there's an awakening happening because you're starting to realize, oh my God, like what's, what is violating my life right now? And it was that. And so anyway, I made a nine month plan to exit and I started my own company. First, it was in real estate and retail, um, which did very well uh, until the, the 2008 great recession happened. And, you know, at 31, I was an executive at 32, I became a millionaire and I had an eight figure business. And by 34, it all collapsed because the recession, basically, I didn't have the cash reserves to keep me alive mm -hmm. uh, in business. Mm -hmm. And that was another turning point, Kathy, for me to evaluate my values, right? To go, I still felt like I was still applying values that did not truly mean anything to me, like ambition to build this eight figure business. And I was like, okay, success leaves clues. What am I being resistant and stubborn around? Cause I'm like, no matter, again, I'm glad I had the surge of increase, but it wasn't sustainable. I, mm -hmm. You know, just as fast as I grew, I failed. And the reason part of that is, is because I was good at marketing. And here, that's why marketing is so important because it actually will make you money faster. But if you don't mm -hmm. have your values under it, it's just a leaky bucket. In fact, sometimes it's a whole bucket that just fell through, like one big old hole. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, you know. Like two, the 2008 hole. <laughs> the 2008 hole. Like, you know, and, and everybody was affected. But man, if you yes. business... Um, it was huge because there was no bailout for small business. Mm -hmm. There was only a bailout right. for big business. And, and, you know, with now at the timing of this interview, we're in the pandemic and people mm -hmm. say, you know, um, you know, what would you do differently? I said, well, I'm so glad I learned that lesson in 2008 back to, you don't know success until you know failure because I learned a big lesson. And that was, I need to have more cash available so that I can, if there's hard times, get through it. And here's the thing. You don't learn that overnight and you don't build a cash reserve overnight either. I, I just had to make a commitment. I had to make a commitment in 2008 that I would never get myself or I would try really hard. I would know better, <laughs> not put myself in this position again. And so over the mm -hmm. past 12 years, I reevaluated back to values what I needed my real values to be. And my, my five values are autonomy, so that's the sovereignty to make my own decisions and have self-responsibility of the outcome regardless of the outcome. So even if I fail, it's still, I made the decision. I made the intentional decision and therefore I can't blame anybody else, right? And I certainly will not blame myself either because I'll say, mm. okay, I pooched that one. <laughs> and what did I learn? And, yeah. and that's the other thing is like, just sometimes those, not sometimes, it never feels good to fail. It never right. feels good to make a decision that didn't work out, but you should feel proud of yourself that you actually made one. Cause back to being, um, maybe an indecision or the devil, that's the devil because you'll never really know. At least now you know, cause then you can do something about it. So top value is autonomy. Second value is justice. So I wanted, I realized back to my own personal experience of being a woman, being a woman of color, being outspoken, you know, um, that, and also that just wasn't, it, it wasn't fair. And then I started to notice obviously like the rest of the world, like who else is not being justly taken care of, you know? And I started to have a whole different view in 2006 when I got my job. It's like, wow, this is what my black women friends are going through. This is what my women friends who are brown, who, cause I'm a light skinned Asian. People can't really figure me out. Sometimes they're like, are you white? Are you Hispanic? Are you, you know, I look weird. So like, meaning like you, you can't look really beautiful. Out. Well, thank you. But I just am like, you know, so I, yeah. it's not like me where somebody says, uh, somebody yeah. recently said, Oh, I think it was our, our friend Lynn. She said, I said something about looking whiter and she goes, Oh no, there's no way for you to look whiter <laughs> than you look. <laughs> I love it. Yes. Right. And so Lynn always tells it like it is. <laughs> truly, 
That's the kind of crew we run with because I actually, That's believe, right. I truly believe that you want to get people around you who will, again, challenge you and still love you forward through it because mm -hmm. actually this country even if you're listening and I know this you have a global community but in the United States our value in the United States is freedom and supposedly and but yeah. my justice value when I link it to that it needs to be freedom for all and so every decision I make I ask myself is this decision just for not just me but for as many people that I'm helping as possible third is um generosity so I grew up with a grandmother. Her name was Generosa, literally, had like a perfect mm -hmm. name. And um, she was the most generous woman, person, human I've ever known and still to this day. And she taught me that there is nothing that I have that cannot be shared. No one can take anything away from you by sharing what you know. And so I have that philosophy and approach towards my business and my life. Like there's nothing you can take from me now. Of course, I mean, you got to protect your intellectual property. You got to make sure people don't steal from you. Yes, absolutely. But in terms of my willingness to share my, my gifts, my talents, my skills, it's my responsibility to do that, you know? And then you deal with the mechanics of some other stuff in other ways. Third, I mean, fourth is leadership. I believe that true leadership is a function of self over others, meaning you have to lead yourself first, meaning you got to have the integrity with yourself. You have to keep your word to yourself first, because if you make a lot of promises outside or directives outside and you're not keeping your word to yourself, that's not leadership. And so modeling leadership starts with you. And it's not a if then statement. It's not you start, you start leading. And then when you figure yourself out, you start leading other people. That's then you're going to wait forever because we are a constant <laughs> work in progress. Am I right? Like uh -huh. based yeah. on, you know, just even life itself, right? Like it's people are going to come for you. That's what you need to understand. And meaning in a negative way, there are going to be haters, trolls, people who will take, yes, that's why you're scared too. Why you don't want to be visible because you're so afraid that you'll come. The risk is, You'll either be ignored or hurt more. And, I, and here's my answer. I want to say this all in love. Yes, that's going to happen. Because the more people know you, the more their own stuff is going to come up. You're not going to just trigger people in a positive way. You're going to trigger people's insecurities. And so leadership looks like even though that may happen, I will lead myself and help others lead too. And then finally, legacy. So it's like, I really believe in leaving a legacy now, not in a far off future. So obviously I want to leave something behind for my children and my descendants. And obviously like the women and, and even men, obviously that, that work with me, I want to be able to make that impact in their lives. But I don't want to wait till I'm dead to leave a legacy. I want to do it while I'm here. And so bottom line is autonomy, justice, generosity, leadership, and legacy. Those are my five values. And I make all of my life and business decisions through them. That's what living a values driven life is. Literally. I, I ask myself if I'm making a big decision, like, Oh, I'm going to go hire, I'm going to go join a program like Kathy's, right? If you're sitting mm -hmm. there asking yourself that or anything, I would ask, mm -hmm. does this support my autonomy? Does this support me having being more just, does this support me in, uh, being a leader and generous and all the things. And if the answer is yes, then I'm a yes, right? If it's not a yes, the next thing I ask is why? Is it a fear that's coming up? Am I, um, am I, am I, am I pulling up some traumatic experience from my past um, that's informing my no? And if it is, okay, so, but if it's informing your no, great. It's fear, not danger, because there's a difference between fear and danger. Danger is we don't stick our fingers in sockets. We don't go stand <laughs> outside in the freeway and just go, hey, try not to hit me, you know? <laughs> like, that's danger. That's mm -hmm. not – fear is actually fake. It's a regulator, but it's not real. Danger is real. Danger is a real thing, okay? That's why when people are like, be fearless, I'm like, mm. Actually, I more would say be, be in relationship with your fear because your fear is informing you that, okay, and you clearly have to say, is this dangerous or is this just something that I'm scared of? 
danger is a real thing. So again, if Kathy were to tell you, go stand, you know, hey, go stand on a cliff so you can be a better virtual expert and, and then hang off it. Like, <laughs> right? Like, it's so funny yeah, to me how people do are like scared, right? About, <laughs> yeah, there is no danger, um, you know, in, in putting yourself... Some of you, there might be, there might be deep seated things, you know, an environmental issue, meaning like in your house where it's actually dangerous for you to live there. And I, I want to acknowledge those things because I know there's a lot of unsaid things about women because you asked about women, you know, not mm -hmm. feeling supported by your spouse or, you know, and, and that might feel dangerous to you because maybe you're worried you'll get divorced or maybe that person who you're with is not kind. Maybe that, and this is mm -hmm. like just the real truth. Because your business, right. I, I like to say this, I, I know I'm going all over the place, but there's so many things I want to share. It's like, you know, there's no such thing as business problems, period. There's only personal problems. That's it. Okay. I What's love that. calling you? We have infinite mentorship, education, and information available more than any time in history has ever been. That's right. So you don't have a business problem. You have a personal problem that you need to work out. And that's why the mindset piece is so important. It's so important so that you just get clear and clean about what's got what's to shift in order for you to be able to take the leap. Because um, mm -hmm. you can keep, like, 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 um, like Kathy said, you can keep taking action, but then you're only trying to get mm -hmm. credit for effort, which is you do need effort. But if you're only mm -hmm. wanting to get a gold star for effort, you're probably going to get frustrated or burnt out because mm -hmm. it's not just effort. It's making cleaner decisions, which means you're living a values driven life. Yeah. Because no, when I met you, what I realize now is I was marketing, yeah, but I was hiding because right away you said, if you, um, I will coach. I asked Jen. I said I would love to coach with you. Will you allow me in? Okay. She had a high-level CEO circle group that I really wanted to be a member of. And she, the first thing you asked me was, "Will you do a live event?" And my insides just went. <laughs> and I've been hiding for 20 years. No, you know that's what I wanted to say, mm -hmm. but I wanted to work with you so badly. I was. I said. If that's what you require, I will. And you said, yes, because that's what's going to work for you. Yeah. And I said, okay. But then I was so afraid. Remember how afraid I was? You and were. I kept sabotaging it. And I remember the phone call that we had where you said, okay. I, I mean, you just said it so straight, straight, which I love. Okay. There is no turning back at this point. You have to do this event that you are halfway towards already. So just figure out that you're doing it, move forward and get it done. And I'm just sobbing, you guys, literally sobbing on the phone. And she wasn't going to let me uh, play victim at all. She's just like, now just do it. Yes. And I did. And oh, I was so thankful because that first event, um, you know, a lot of people go uh, their whole careers without number one, doing an event or number two, having a profit of an, at an event. Yes. And I sold 30,000 at that event and most of it was profit. And then the next year I did an event for 300,000. Um, and that's just in two and a half days each time. Yeah. And this year, even with COVID, um, I had an event planned for April and of course then March happened and I pivoted yeah. to an online event and earn 250,000 and you know, there's like really no overhead when you do a, a virtual event. Yeah. And we're getting ready to do our event, our, another virtual event in October. Um, so all I can say is thank you for helping me stop hiding and believing that I was doing everything I could because I was taking so much marketing action when it was really still not um, really supporting me confidently. Absolutely. And I think I just want to acknowledge that Kathy, she, she's all, what I love about Kathy is she's so coachable, you know, and I think it's so important to go into a mentor coachy relationship saying, look, I know what I know. And Kathy, what I love about Kathy, what you all need to know, she's like, I know what I know. I'm actually good at what I do. I know a lot of people question that. I'm like, I'm not questioning it. 
you know? So you can still be in that, oh, am I good enough? All that and still be very successful. That's the other part of it. I have my own fears mm-hmm. and crap. You know, I like to call it next level, next devil. You know, you hit one level and then the devil comes and you need to overcome that. You know, uh, you know, most quote unquote successful people are dealing with a lot of demons. They're dealing with a lot of like, you know, how do I, how do I, am I, am I really good enough? Like, so you're no different. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter where you are, where you're just starting and deciding that you want to pursue a virtual expert business or you are now six figures and you want to hit seven, you know, six figures, not the same as seven, seven is not the same as eight. There are different, you have to show up in a, in a different way each time. So this is Mm -hmm. the journey. There's no evading the journey, right? It's kind of like, that's why Mm -hmm. I said, you're hiding. I'm not, I see you. Mm -hmm. I can see you over there. (laughs) You know, like I get that you're trying to. That's exactly what you do. You see us. Yeah. I'm like, I see you and you're worth, and, and, and I want just, come on, Kathy, you got this. Right. And, and Mm -hmm. sometimes you need a cheerleader. Sometimes you need a, you need a butt kicker. Sometimes you need just to be told, I love you. And you, no matter what happens, you can be so proud of that you went all the way. You know, you're going to be yeah. so proud on the other side, you know, and she, mm-hmm. and then, <laughs> hello, juicy results, 30K, 300K, mm-hmm. 250K. Mm-hmm. I love mm-hmm. these numbers. I mean, they make yeah. me happy as a coach, but that's the kind of opportunity you have when, and, and here's the thing. Oh my God, Kathy, you didn't die. Look at you. You're right here talking to me. <laughs> So, wow. I didn't die and didn't I learned die. so much. Yeah. So, you know, and it's. And helped it's, so many people and, you know, just all those things that you kept telling me. That's but the you thing. needed to kick my butt that day. Yeah. And I'm so thankful because um, if any of you have tried to work with somebody and they, you know, they coddle you constantly and they never really push you out of your comfort zone, um, find someone like Jennifer Kim and her Jennifer Kim herself, if you can. Yeah. (laughs) Thank you. Because I've learned how to do that more working with Jen and step into that leadership. Well, I want to say something about that back to being coachable is, you know, if you hire experts, okay, you're an expert listening to this podcast right now. You are somebody who has a skill set that can help someone else. So don't get also overwhelmed with expert. Am I an expert? Yeah. If you have a skill that can help someone else, you are an expert in that skill. You may not be an expert in other skills that you may be wanting to learn, and then you'll create that expertise over there. But I wanted to make the point about what Kathy said is, why would you hire a coach, a consultant, a trainer, a mentor of any type if you were already an expert in what they do, right? The reason you hire support or you get a coach or you get, or even if you learn a new skill, let's say in your expertise, let's say you're an accounting expert and, and you know, accounting, but now you actually want to start advising people on wealth strategies, which is different than accounting that, you know, accounting is different than like financial strategy. You may go and go become a certified financial planner. That's an example of one type of expertise because it's a gap that you have, that you want to make sure you have that feather in your cap to be able to tell people, Hey, I'm an account, I'm a CPA and I'm a certified financial planner. That's an example of like two different routes put together. Same thing about when you hire a coach to help you to the next level, to grow your business or to grow your life, you're missing that in some way. So you hire them to help you through that. So if you try to fight them, I'm not saying you shouldn't have your own discernment. You shouldn't put your own thought into it that you, you definitely don't want to be some type of pawn where it's like, whatever they say, you do it, you know, if it really is coming up and it doesn't work for you, but it's you being brave enough to say, I'm willing to go into this conversation and I'm resistant. And I want a coach who will tell me, is it really resistance? Or sometimes I told Kathy, you're like, she would have ideas. Even this podcast was an idea. Remember Kathy? Like you, you know, mm-hmm. years ago, you're like, I'm thinking about doing a podcast. Yeah. You think it's a waste of time, Jen? And mm-hmm. I said, well, let's yeah. talk about why what it is, is what are you going to be using it for? Because I could have easily, after she had that dialogue with me, could have said to Kathy, honestly, it's not, and she knows, I would tell her, not worth it. And if she still went ahead and did it, that's still her choice, which is great. Mm -hmm. Or she could have decided, you know what? Thanks. Because we both just, I actually told her, 
when we were talking, I think this is a great idea for you. You're so, she's so fun on camera, but she's also so humble and super smart. And all those, you know, I think it's such, this is such an approachable show. And I was like, I think more people need to see that part of you, Kathy. This is a great idea to do that. And she did it. And now it's like here. And she also went into it very strategically. You know, she had these live events that she needed to do first, prioritizing your time, your energy, and your Mm -hmm. money around what's really going to build your business. Like what's worth investing in, right? And so Mm -hmm. great coaches like us, you know, will tell you. (laughs) And, and, and then you get the chance to decide, you know, um, because ultimately I know Kathy's this way and this is partly why I love her is good coaches aren't in the business of making you codependent on them. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a synergistic, it's a relationship, just like any good relationship with your spouse or your children or your friends. It's about, Hey, we're going to, sometimes we're going to have a little like tension right? Because we're talking Mm -hmm, about big mm -hmm. things. We're talking about things that are making your life, like putting yourself out there. That's a big deal. And so you need somebody that you feel like you can trust that will bring forward your confidence in a way that's authentic to you and on values for you and on brand for you. And uh, Mm -hmm. trying to do it yourself. Ooh, don't do that. That's the one thing I'll say. Mm -mm. Oh, like, let's, can we talk (laughs) about that? Because doing it yourself is definitely not a good idea. Yeah, I, I uh, listened to one of your webinars, one of your classes, and you talked about um, you can't guarantee how to achieve success, but I can tell you how to guarantee to achieve failure, and it is to go this alone. Mm, yes. Yes, yes, yes. I have a lot of Jen Kim quotes. <laughs> hey, I'm a recovering Lone Ranger myself, guys, just to let you know. I am a total recovering control freak and Lone Ranger myself, right? I, you know, I came from a world, especially in corporate, you, are, you have to hit these performance metrics in order to not just keep your job, but get raises and hopefully promotions, even though they plan on giving it to somebody else, you know? Um, And whereas in the entrepreneurial world, you have to put those metrics on yourself and you have no support. In the corporate world, you have teams, even if it's your boss, there's usually a few people around you. Man, when you're first starting out, right, in entrepreneurship, you're all alone. So you have to be the janitor and the CEO and everything in between. And it, it, if you try to go at that alone, you're not, so you're not qualified. I'm not, you know, I'll, you're not qualified yet to be, mm-hmm. to understand what you need. And so having somebody who's done it and, you know, you want to evaluate your, your, your mentors too. Like you want to see, have they actually done the work? Are they in the work? Are they doing it? Are they demonstrating bravery and courage while they're building and being unapologetic about making money. I, you know, Kathy, what I love too is Kathy has this way of speaking about her revenue numbers in a way that doesn't feel braggadocious. It just feels factual. Like, oh, I did this. This is great. And I had all this fear. That's the real, that's authentic. You know, I, every time I make mm-hmm. more money, I'm thrilled, but I'm like, wow, I did that. Ooh, I like, <laughs> I, I honestly never go in fully going, I'm going to crush it. I, I believe I'm worthy. That's the part mm-hmm. that we opened up with. Like I, I finally mm-hmm. believe I'm worthy right. of this type of money, but it doesn't mm-hmm. mean I'm not still nervous. Is it going to work? Mm-hmm. Am I going to fail? Mm-hmm. You know, um, but, <laughs> but that's what best- makes being a business owner and entrepreneur so exciting. Don't you think Jennifer? Yeah. I mean, I love that to me. Um, all of this that we're talking about here, this is like, um, those people that love to jump out of an airplane for the adrenaline rush, I get yes. an adrenaline rush every day in my business. Yes. As, and it is, yes, me too. And I never thought that, and it, there are going to be times, right? Kathy, don't, some days you feel like poop though. Like, I mean, around oh, your, of course, right? <laughs> of course. <laughs> right. But the poop's worth it, right? Back it to like, the failure and the success because it's your poop. You only got to clean up your own poop. You don't have to clean up everybody else's and wipe everybody else's, every, everybody else's butt like we did in the corporate world. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, exactly. I'm not your butt anymore. Okay, I'm only going to wipe mine. <laughs> I love it's that. True. I love that. 
It's true. Well, Jen, I could talk to you all day long, but I know how tight your schedule is. And so we have got to wrap it up here. Yeah. I'm going to have you back as many times as I can possibly have you back and talk about different things. But I want to let everybody know how they can have more Jennifer Kim in their life. Yeah. So well, yeah, tell us. Okay. Awesome. First of all, I want to give you all a gift and it's what I start out every business relationship with it doesn't matter if you're starting or even if like Kathy, she had already hit six figures and she wanted to work with me in a higher level. I always start out with what we call a brand archetype influence mix assessment. It's called the AIM, A-I-M for short. And every single day I have a funnel that runs that people pay $250 to get this report from me. Every day I get a ping, ping, ping in my Slack that says we got more sales, but I'm going to give it to Kathy's audience because I love Kathy and I also know how if you can just understand who you are, which is what this assessment helps you do, it's the first step. It's not all the steps, but it's the first really deep, intensely devoted step to uncovering what you really care about. And so it's called the AIM. So you can go to masterbrand.me forward slash dare. So masterbrand.me forward slash dare. And um, the other thing is I love dialoguing in two areas specifically. One is on Instagram at jennifer.chem or on LinkedIn, where you can find me. If you just type in Jennifer Chem, you'll find me on LinkedIn. And I'm also on Facebook um, on my business page if you want to check me out there. And I think Kathy will have all those links for you too. Yes. I will. I will have all of those links in the show notes. And I really appreciate all the time you spent with us today, Jennifer. Thank you for all sharing all your knowledge. You were demonstrating your value of generosity. I know your grandma's looking down on you today going, way to go. Thanks, so thank Kathy. you so much, Jennifer. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Thank you for listening to Dare to Leap. Say hello and access additional resources at virtualexperttraining.com. There, you'll be able to connect with Kathy to share your feedback and join her community. Join us again soon on Dare to Leap. Until then. Mm -hmm.